Welcome to worship at Lindale Lutheran Church on this second Sunday after Epiphany. I'm Pastor Cheryl, and I'm so glad to be worshiping with you this morning. Today we enjoy a traditional liturgy. Ritual and tradition perhaps especially important in this time of continued struggle, unprecedented unrest, and ongoing pandemic. Ancient words reminding us that our God is steadfast and eternal. 
Thanks to Lauren and Steve for sharing their gifts this morning. We sing our gathering hymn. We gather as we live in the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear now the Old Testament lesson for today. The Old Testament reading for today is written in 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10 and 11 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord God called Samuel again a third time, 
And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told Eli everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Word of God, Word of Life. The Gospel according to John, the first chapter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to Nathanael, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, Jesus said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pretty much always wait until January 6th, the 12th day of Christmas, the day of Epiphany, to take down our decorations and our tree. This year, even as our trees shed needles and dried out, we waited even longer. Perhaps more than ever before, we gloried in the light. Sitting with only the light of the tree before the sun rose with the first cup of coffee in the morning, and quick to plug the tree back in just as soon as it was even close to dusk. It seemed we needed the light. We needed the light in the darkness. In fact, I confess, taking a page from my youngest sister's book, I now have a January tree, an epiphany tree. I am still holding on to the light, enjoying the white lights and snowflakes and stars on this very small, inexpensive artificial tree in the dark of the early morning as I work only from the light of my computer and the fake tree. Fake tree, that's kind of big at our house, first time ever. Right or wrong, we are real tree people. Artificial tree, but the light that shines is real. Real, 
even in the darkness. Here we are, after the awe of Epiphany, the beauty of the star, the magnificence of the Magi, after the baptism of Jesus, the splendor of the heavens opening, and the dove descending, here we are. We stand in the darkness, in the hard place between the wonder of the word made flesh and the conflicting joy and struggle as we attempt to respond to that word. How do we hold on to the light? How do we let our light shine? How do we answer the call of the light of the world? The many call stories in our Bible show us that our God is a God who knows us, knows us personally, knows us by name, and calls us into new life, calls us to walk in the light. In baptism, we are called both by our secular name and by our adopted name, Christian, that is, of Christ, and a candle is lit. Claire, who will be baptized this week, is called into that new life. She will no longer be just an individual, but will forever also be a part of a community, called by God to let her light shine. All the baptized have a calling in God's world. God doesn't just call pastors and deacons. God calls children like Samuel in the Old Testament lesson today, and fishermen and tax collectors. A list of biblical calls includes God called Noah to build an ark. God called Abraham and Sarah when they were old to leave their home and go on a journey to establish a nation. God called the boy Samuel out of a deep sleep a story that affirms the faith of children. God called Esther, telling her that she was made for such a time as this. God called Jonah, who turned out to be a reluctant prophet, even after spending a few days in the belly of a fish. God called Mary, a teenage girl, to give birth to the Savior. God called Peter to be the rock upon which a church could be built. God called Paul on the road to Damascus and set him on a path that would transform the world. And he too saw a bright light. It's about light. On this eve of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I thank Christian for reminding me of the words of this great civil rights leader. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate. Violence multiplies violence and toughness multiplies toughness in a descending spiral of destruction. So when Jesus says, love your enemies, he is setting forth a profound and ultimately inescapable ad admonition. King says we must love our enemies because hate scars the soul and distorts the personality that hate is an evil, dangerous force, that hate brings irreparable damage to its victims. We have seen its ugly consequences in the terrible indignities and injustices perpetrated against millions of God's children. But, and again I quote, there is another side that we must never overlook. Hate is just as injurious to the person who hates. Like an unchecked cancer, hate corrodes the personality and eats away its vital unity. Hate destroys one's sense of values and objectivity. It causes one to describe the beautiful as ugly and the ugly as beautiful, and to confuse true with the false and the false with the true. Jesus is eternally right. May we hear and follow Jesus' words before it is too late. May we solemnly realize that we shall never be true children of our Heavenly Father until we love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us." End quote. We must all be in this together, loving and praying for each other. Where we come from isn't important. Nathaniel in today's gospel can't let go of where Jesus comes from, and he is honest enough to express, amaz to express amazement that anything good can come out of Nazareth, that God's Messiah could come from such an insignificant village. But that reality shows us, first, that God can accomplish great things in unlikely places, 
even places like the no longer incorporated town of Lindale, Minnesota. And God is capable, perfectly capable, of nurturing greatness through such apparently insignificant places and ordinary people. It is never about where we come from. It is about where, or rather to whom, we are going. Our preconceptions of God and God's activity can prevent us from an authentic encounter with God. The boy Samuel in today's Old Testament lesson at first mistook the voice of the Lord for that of Eli. Eli then helped Samuel realize who was calling him. Even when confronted by the divine, it is possible for people to be oblivious to God's presence in their lives. We need each other. Jesus finds Philip, and Philip finds Nathaniel, the best possible invitation for evangelism, both then and now. Come and see. That's it. Come and see. Every single one of us can invite someone to come and see. Our fumbling words, as we attempt to speak of the love we meet in Jesus, will be enough because those words will be God-given. But it is not enough to simply believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Discipleship is about following Jesus. What does our discipleship look like? How has our church tried to follow Jesus in our programs, in our prayers, in our lives, in all the areas of our lives beyond our church life? How have we learned to speak of Jesus? As one writer asked, what have we said about Jesus in our documents, in our favorite hymns, in our stained glass windows? Do we see discipleship as a willingness to walk with Jesus? Do we know it will be a joyful but costly relationship? Do we hear Jesus' call as a call first and always to love? Because following Jesus, answering his call is about love. Love, not hatred, not anger, not violence. God honors qualities, as one commentator lists, of honesty, genuineness, integrity, and open-mindedness, mindedness. Jesus can read people's hearts. Jesus is the light that illumines each of us. Jesus not only gives each of us light, he sees each of us in our true light and calls us, speaking to us, just as we are. Eugene Peterson says that biblical faith is founded in the reality that God addresses us personally. The fundamental conviction of our faith is not so much that God is as that God speaks. But as we talked about last week, like the Magi, we must study, we must watch, we must be open, and we must listen. God keeps calling leaders in every generation to help heal the wounds of oppression and hatred, to share the good news of salvation. You are called, I am called, we are called, called to love. People still want to know, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But today that question is really about the places where we live. What good can come out of right here and right now? We are weary. We are worn, but when we ask our precious Lord to take our hand, when we say, here I am, Lord, when we follow, we can see. We can see that light does shine in the darkness. We can see that with love we shall overcome, not with weapons and violence, but with love. With love, it can happen. My epiphany tree might not be real, but the light is real. Come and see. Amen.
take my hand Lead me on, help me stand I am tired, I am weak, and I am warm Through the storm and through the night Lead me on to the light Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, for our bishops Anne and Elizabeth, that following Jesus, the church live out its calling every single day, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God of grace, we give you thanks for the gift of baptism for water and your word. Bless Claire Rood, baptized this week at Lindale Lutheran, that she may grow in grace. Bless her parents and sponsors that they too continue to grow as they guide and direct Claire's faith journey. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For health care providers, police officers, and firefighters, for judges, attorneys, and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and most especially for the leaders of governments, that they speak truth and provide protection and justice to all people especially the most vulnerable, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. We remember the life and work and death of Martin Luther King Jr. and we pray that we might have the courage and determination to follow his example in battling injustice and living the gospel of love. Fill us with your spirit where our human community is divided by racism, torn by repression, saddened by fear and ignorance, that we may give ourselves to your work of healing. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially all those suffering from and impacted by the coronavirus, and those we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts, that God console all who suffer, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you all. Please take a moment to share the peace with those around you. And if you are alone this morning, give yourself a hug. Feel your brothers and sisters reaching out to you. And trust that God is with you, offering you the peace of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We worship with our offering. You are invited to try online giving using our website, lindalelutheranchurch.com, or our Facebook page. Our mailing address is available on our website. 
Your generosity supports God's work as the ongoing digital worship is an unexpected and continual expense. Thank you so much for your gifts. We pray our offering prayer. Most merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Some of us were able to come together earlier this morning for drive-by Holy Communion in our parking lot. While we cannot yet gather inside to receive the sacrament, never is it inappropriate to offer thanks to our God with the familiar and much-loved Great Thanksgiving. Thank you again, Steve and Lauren. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm sorry.